Are you someone that's been trying to grow your hair and have it grow thicker and longer? Well, let me share with you what I have been doing, and I have been seeing a huge difference in my hair. So I have been consuming every single morning collagen powder from Primal Kitchen. I get the chocolate. I also have tried vanilla, and they're both so yummy. There's a ton of other flavors too, but I love chocolate. So every morning I put together some hemp milk, a couple of scoops of the collagen powder. Sometimes I throw in some organic fruit in there and that's it. That's my breakfast. And my hair has been growing, honestly, almost a little out of control. It's growing so fast. So if you want to check it out, check out the collagen powders. They're amazing and they just taste so good. Head over to Primal Kitchen. P-R-I-M-A-L-K-I-T-C-H-E-N.com and put in the code Margaret R 10 for 10% off of any collagen powder or actually anything on their website. Trust me, you're going to love how fast your hair grows. Welcome to the Sacred Medicine Podcast. My name is Margaret Romero. I'm a Columbia-trained functional medicine nurse practitioner, and here I uncover the truth behind chronic illness so that you can finally heal. I'm a women's health and hormone expert and love empowering women to finally live their life fully and powerfully through optimal health. This is the Sacred Medicine Podcast. And we are back for another week of the Sacred Medicine Podcast. Listen up, this week's guest, my goodness, I am just floored by the information and her knowledge about sex and couples and love and romance and arousal and intercourse and orgasms. I mean, we are talking about it all in this episode So Susan Bratton is known as the intimacy expert to millions, all right? She's a champion and advocate for all those who desire intimacy and passion for their whole life long. She is the co-founder and CEO of two corporations, best-selling author, publisher of 34 books, and a ton of programs, okay, such as Sexual Soulmates, Relationship Magic, Steamy Sex Ed, Ravish Him. I mean, and it goes on and on and on. She's been featured in the New York Times, CNBC, the Today Show, Fox, NBC. I mean, listen, she's everywhere and she teaches everything you want to know about sex and intimacy, orgasms. I mean, everything. So, Don't forget, stay till the end because we get a little personal. (laughs) And well, without further ado, on to the show. Okay, we're back for another week of the Sacred Medicine Podcast. And ladies, listen up because this is the podcast episode for you. I have Susan Bratton. She is an intimacy expert, and we are talking about libido, desire, arousal today. So here we go. Thank you, Susan, so much for being here. Margaret, I love the concept of your podcast being sacred medicine, um, because what I really practice and teach is sacred sexuality, not necessarily tantra techniques and things like that, but what I like to call heart-connected conscious lovemaking techniques bedroom communication skills, and ageless sexuality. And I love it. There's so much out there around sexuality that's so transactional. And frankly, what I feel is the patriarchal perspective on sex. And so on this show today that we're doing together, I really want to talk about what the matriarchal view of sex would be if we could just wipe the slate clean and start over. How do we need to be made love to in our feminine bodies? And why does what has transpired in the world of sexuality, um, why it has impinged or shut down or stifled our sexual feminine self-expression? 
Uh, because for so many women, they feel like their libido is on the rocks and mm-hmm. they just, they want to want, but they don't. Or yes. they don't know what they want, but they know what they're getting isn't it. Or they feel like they have this untapped potential that's never been called forth. And a lot of it is due to health issues, but surprising health issues, not what women think, which is my hormones are wrecking my libido. That's actually erroneous in 90% of the cases. So I'm glad to be on and to have a a sacred approach to our sexuality in that conversation. So thank you. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. I love how you just worded this all about how um, we we as women have been... I hate the word subjected to patriarchal sex and how we need to turn it around and really embrace what we want and and what that looks like. What that looks like is what I'm here to talk about because I like to, I call myself, you're going to laugh at this one. I call myself an orgasmonaut. I go to the furthest reaches of outer space of our female orgasmic potential. And then I come back and I give my fans and followers the map to the territory of what is possible for you to experience. So, and I've been doing this for 15 years. This is actually my second career. I turned 60 this year and I'm having the best sex of my life. My vulva (laughs) is absolutely gorgeous. It's pink perfect. It tastes great. It smells great. It operates great. My (laughs) orgasms are incredible. I'm having a fantastic time in my love and sex life. Amazing. I am literally just getting started. I mean, I am still just expanding like a supernova in my sexuality. Ah, I love it. You have to share your secrets. By the way, if, uh, if half even or even yeah, if half of the patients that came to me had that experience, they'd be different women altogether. I tell yeah. you, it was a life changer for me in my early forties when I'd been married to my husband for a decade and I'd never had an orgasm from intercourse, and I just really didn't want to have intercourse anymore, and it was ruining our marriage. But I had to kind of like steal myself for it. It just wasn't good. Mm. And instead of getting divorced, my husband and I decided to get totally honest about it and try to solve the problems. I had to overcome some sexual trauma issues. I had to learn how to orgasm. And when I realized, when we realized that orgasms are learned skills, you know, there are some women who are born having orgasms from intercourse. There are some women who can orgasm very easily with, you know, self-pleasuring, et cetera, but it's the minority. And if I could just, and what happens is that, especially in a heterosexual relationship, which is what most most people are in, um, she thinks it's her fault and so does he. Because it's so easy for him to have an orgasm. Like, you know, that uh, wonderful TED talk about the orgasm gap, bridging the orgasm gap, uh, where it's, you know, 90 plus percent of the time a man can come from intercourse, but maybe half the time a woman can sometimes have an orgasm. Right. And so women think it's their fault because it's so easy for him and so hard for them. And what I like to do is I like to teach women how to cross the gasm chasm, how to become massively multi-orgasmic in lots of different ways. Um, There are, it's funny, I'm writing an article right now on the 20 kinds of female orgasm and the 20 kinds of male orgasm, because we basically have the same parts arranged in different order. As a matter of fact, you had Sherry Winston on your show. I think she was like your number two episode. She is one of my mentors. I absolutely adore her and learned so much from her. I love her. Yes. And uh, she really has done an incredible job having women understand that we have as much erectile tissue in our vulva as our male bodied partners do in in their penis, you know, but they have the benefit of hemodynamics, which is this, these big chambers of erectile tissue that the blood just goes and flows right into their penis. And then their little suspensory ligament just lifts it right up and they're ready to go. And here we are with essentially a pachinko game of erectile tissue in our vulva you know it's Mm. all these nooks and crannies we're the we're the english muffin of the sex world right (laughs) with our vulvas and so it takes us a lot longer to have an orgasm and 
you know, our, our partners, our male body partners, they're full speed ahead, testosterone, ready to go. We're estrogen. We're slower. We need more emotional connection. We need things to be really much slower and more sensual. And we need a lot more stimulation in our vulvas than we ever are getting. And our male body partners can't relate to that, and we don't know to ask for it. So I spend a lot of my time holding up little diagrams of the vulva and showing women where all the clitoral tissue is, because there's it's clitoral, urethral, perineal. We have scads of erectile tissue in our vulvas, but we just have to get it stimulated through solo pleasuring, toys, hands, which I think are the best. Our little articulate fingers are really, really good at bringing the blood flow to the vulva so we can finally cross that gasm chasm. Penetration orgasms or orgasms from intercourse, like all orgasms, are really just a learned skill. You have to know that you can do it, and then you have to know how to do it, and then you do it, like all orgasms. So I I really like the opportunity to tell women, you are just like everyone else, all your stuff, works just fine. It's not your hormones. It's blood flow. You've got to get the the blood flowing to your yes. pelvic bowl. Exactly. And so, so few women understand that just like hormones kind of fall off a cliff as we age, our nitric oxide production falls off a cliff as we age. Mm. And it's nitric oxide that shunts the blood to our genitals during arousal. And when we can't get the blood there, we have ED. Women's erectile dysfunction is a real issue, but it doesn't get any coverage because there's no pill for it, which just really chaps my buns. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's... For sure. I know. I'm surprised. Is is that a diagnosis? Have they come up with that diagnosis yet? Women's well, erectile dysfunction? Well, they call it hypoactive dis- desire disorder or something like that. And I'm oh. like, um, we don't have hypoactive dis- desire disorder. We have shitty sex. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I, I have so many There's years. There's no pill for that either. <laughs> exactly. No, so many years of working with um, my female patients and, you know, women in their 30s just have zero desire. I, I mean, they just, they're like, my husband is is hot. He's so hot. He's sexy, but I don't, it's, I don't, I just don't feel like I want to have sex. And so why don't you share with us just like the difference between libido, arousal, desire, Yeah. I think about it like three concentric circles, a Venn diagram, where there are three interlocking circles. So you think about it at a top line as libido is your body's responses. Desire is how you feel about yourself and your partner. So it's more the emotional piece of things. And then arousal is the actual physiologic and of course, that's connected to your brain, the biggest the biggest sex organ. Everyone knows that. Um, desire, is, um, I mean, arousal is really that stair-stepping of our nervous system, all of our sensation, all of our heart connection, and the stimulation that we need to go up into desire. And the reason why women want to want their partners and don't is that he's always ready to go. He's always horny we feel guilty. He comes at us. We have sex. And after we've had sex, we're like, all right, well, that was good. Why, why do I always resist this? And it's because we're not, he's way ahead of us and he doesn't know how to turn around and come back and get us and take us up into our turn on. He's already turned on. And so we're rushed. We don't get the blood flow we need. We don't get arousal. We don't get romance. We don't get seduction. We don't get connection. We don't get full body touch. I mean, if I think, mo- and, and oh, yeah. our male body partners are watching porn, 90% of which is degrading to women if you look at the data. Um, so they're, they're learning skills from something Awful. that is created to help them masturbate because they got to keep their sperm topped off. So we've got merchants of degradation filling our male bodied partners with horrible examples of how they think they're supposed to pound us or whatever. I mean, 
you know, there are there is a time and a place Ugh. for good pounding, but that is not what's going to make you want to have sex with your husband. So what I spend all my waking hours doing, Margaret, <laughs> is teaching men and women how to transform having sex into making love. What are what are the seduction techniques? What are the pleasuring skills? What are the or, where's your orgasmic potential? How do you achieve it? How do you connect? How do you talk to each other? How do you turn each other on? Um, you know, there's tons of people out there who are therapists and sexologists, etc., who solve the intractable problems of people's sexuality. But I'm the opposite of that. I'm not the person who fixes your problems. I'm the person who shows you your possibilities. Like I said, I give you the maps, the Technique, the techniques, the tips, the tools, the bedroom communication skills to actually begin to connect as lovers so that you can become aroused and have great sex. So libido, hormones, nitric oxide, I, I actually make a nitric oxide supplement. Um, it's mm. called Flow. And it's made from organic fruit and vegetables because honestly, I looked, I, when I realized that it wasn't hormones, that it was our gut microbiome and our nitric oxide that are really the issues in the libido issue. Mm. I did a ton of research over many years on libido botanicals and found a few that I think are very good, um, both that have ancestral wisdom and that have clinical data on humans, not just mice. And um, those are, I'll just tell you, because people are like, what are they? Uh, fenugreek, tribulus, tongkatali, maca, and cacao, those five. And with herbs, as you know, when we're in the world of functional medicine, herbs need to be cycled. You know, your body gets used to taking things. And so I tell people cycle the herbs all the time. Cycle one month on, one month off, one month on, one month off with these different herbal, you know, herbal um, products. And I have a daily vitamin that has each one has a different herb in it. So you can just take the daily vitamin every day. And it's a mineral complex too. And it's methylated bees, which also, people are not really understanding exactly activated B versus, you know, folic acid, which just is a toxic it's, chemical at this point. We're going to look back right. on our daily vitamins and go, Jesus, I was killing myself every day with my vitamin. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, exactly. For uh, anybody who's interested, you can find my libido supplements and my blood flow products at the20.store. I'm sorry, the20store.com. T-H-E-2-0-store.com. They're also on Amazon. But uh, take a nitric oxide supplement because it's it's likely not your hormones. And if it is your hormones, it's likely that your biome is messed up. Your gut is messed up. I mean, I, if you're not pooping so easily every day, if the poop, I say if the poop doesn't fall out of your butt and twirl around like a ballerina, <laughs> then you got to start with your gut. It's not necessarily about, oh, I need bioidentical hormone replacement, which I'm a big believer in at 60 years old. I take est, I take biased, I take testosterone, I take progesterone. I mean, I love it all. And I even use oxytocin intravaginally when I'm feeling like I'm getting a little thinning of the tissue because oxytocin suspended in a nice you know, a nice gel of some kind that isn't full of toxic chemicals right. um, is a very, very nice way to fluff up the vaginal mucosa, even if you can't take estrogen. So the microbiome is really important because it's the seat of our neurotransmitter and our hormone production. And the problem is that, you know, we wanted to talk a little bit about functional tests. The problem is that um, when we go to our general traditional allopathic healthcare providers, they're doing, they're doing a blood test. And that's like one snapshot in time of how much free estrogen testosterone we have running around in our blood. And it's not really telling us how much we're making and how much we're metabolizing that's available to us. Right. And and one of the other interesting things is that in a daily vitamin like mine, there's boron in there. Boron is the only thing that allows the protein to be detached from the hormone so it becomes freely available. And people are 
I mean, everybody knows they're low in magnesium, but who's thinking about how much boron they have, you know? So just even taking a daily vitamin can help with the microbiome issues and hormone access to the hormones you're making. Um, But boy, I'll tell you, I, I say to women, start on nitric oxide and then work out your gut issues. And uh, immediately women feel like, oh my God, all of a sudden I'm finally lubricating again. And it's because the vagina doesn't have any glands in it. It is, it's solely reliant on lubricating from the blood plasma being recruited down to the pelvic bowl and then seeping through the many walls of the vaginal mucosa and wetting the walls of the vagina. And so if you're not getting blood flow, because as soon as you start to get plaque in your vascular system, as soon Mm -hmm. as you start to get that, your body starts to hold back places it's sending the blood. You might be getting swollen fingers if your rings get tight or swollen feet. That's the first sign that you're having cardiac issues, you know, plaque in your blood vessels. And so your body is going to protect your organs, your heart, your brain, and they're going to shunt it away from your extremities and your pelvic bowl. So just getting more lubrication helps. But then when you get blood flow to the genitals, you're able to to get engorgement or tumescence. And that is, if if you picture a banana and you say, okay, that's a penis, That banana, all the fruit in that banana is his erectile tissue. It's his corpus cavernosum and his corpus spongiosum. And he gets blood flow, bam, that hemodynamics I mentioned. He gets, bam, he gets an erection. Mm -hmm. We have all that same banana's worth of erectile tissue in our vulva. We have the clitoral glands, which is not erectile tissue, actually. That's the only part of our clitoris that's not erectile, but it's got all the nerve, in, a lot of the nerve endings, not all of them. And then the clitoral legs, the clitoral shaft, the clitoral arms. So the crora, the vestibular bulbs, the shaft, that's all erectile. So is the G-spot. And the G-spot's not a spot. It is actually a long tube of spongy tissue that embraces the urethral canal. So your urine comes from your bladder out the the vestibule, the opening above your vaginal opening and below your clitoris. And it's surrounded by this, what looks like a pool noodle that the kids use in the pool, one of those Mm -hmm. extruded. That's what it looks like. It's all spongy, which is why G-spot pleasuring feels so good. And then at the base of your vaginal canal between your vagina and your rectum is the perineal sponge and that spongy tissue. So your vagina is literally completely embraced, completely wrapped in erectile tissue. And yet women are, men are barely focused on the clitoris. You know, they're starting to be aware of it. And women don't know that that's just the tip of the iceberg, as Sherry Winston calls it, right? Right. She says, you know, the glands of the clitoris is the tip of the iceberg. Everything is submerged. It's the buried pleasure that is wrapped in our entire vulva that we really need. And if you don't have blood flow to the vulva, you can't get all that spongy tissue filled with blood. Right. So by the time we're 50, we have half the production of nitric oxide that we did when we were tw- in our 20s. So we have sensation loss as women, as we age, as we hit midlife and we age, we have an incredible sensation loss. And we don't know it because it just slips away slowly. Mm-hmm. But if you think about it, if you look at the wrinkles in your skin, the wrinkles on your face, the 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 loss of ch- turgidity of your skin, you know, when you go to sleep on a pillow and you wake up and it takes an hour for the wrinkle of the pillow or the sheet to come out of your face. Right. That's what's happening to your all of your erectile tissue in your vulva as well. It's atrophying. It's shrinking. The same thing's happening to your male body partner. His penis is shrinking. When he hits 40, he gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until the day he dies. Unless what we do with our genitals is regenerative treatments. So things like a penis pump for men, which really works when you use a good one. And I I have written a book called The Pumping Guide. It's at pumpingguide.com. 
pumpingguide.com. And over 30,000 copies have been downloaded. It's free. Uh, because I teach people how to use a penis pump to restore erectile function and then to add on top of that either Gaines Wave treatments or the Phoenix Pro, which is an at-home do-it-yourself device, the P-Shot or Priapus Shot, which uses PRP to sure. bring healing factors into the penis. We can do the same things with our vulva. Whether you're using Femi Wave or Cleavana and you're using an O shot or orgasm shot with PRP, you're using a vulva pump or you're using a V Fit. V Fit is a wonderful product for intravaginal red light therapy, a low level laser light therapy or photobiomodulation. If you're having thinning tissue, incontinence, issues like that, um, the V-Fit is a very, very good product. So there are a lot of things we can do that actually are physiologic things that increase the blood flow so that when we feel like we're more lubricated and more and more turned on, when our bodies can turn on, right. then we feel like we want to have sex. When we're flaccid and atrophied and it's painful to have sex... We don't want to have sex. And right. then when we're rushed for sex, when we have to struggle mm -hmm. to have orgasms, all of these things are the things that are holding us back from our, it's not libido, it's it's desire, you know, our body image issues, you know, that's a big one too. If we don't love who we are, then we're holding ourselves back from our our birthright, our sexual birthright. Exactly. So letting go of our body, you know, estrogen makes us so judgmental. Estrogen is a judgy little hormone and she likes to make us monkey mind. She likes to make us worry about everything and she likes to make us hate our bodies. We find every imperfection. Well, if we can just change the channel in our head to K-L-U-V, and every time mm -hmm. something comes up, does my butt look fat? Is my boob hanging weird? Do I, can he see my cellulite? Did I shave well enough? Whatever it is. If we can just change the station on that stuff, because he doesn't see it. <clears throat> Testosterone has rose colored glasses. It likes gynoid fat. It thinks we're pretty. It doesn't mm -hmm. need us to be perfect. We're our own worst enemies when it comes to, a, it comes to embracing our sexual potential. Exactly. No, so true. I wanted to just go back to what you were saying about the decrease in sensation, um, the sensation loss. Now, would this still happen if a woman is even postmenopausal, but she is actively either self-pleasuring or having intercourse on a regular basis? It happens a lot less. You, if you don't use it, you lose it. Right. But I can tell you that at 55, I started getting O shots and I've had six of them. And so for the last five years, I've been doing it just about once a year, a little more than once a year. And um, it doesn't hurt that one of my best friends is one of the leading O shot doctors in the world. <laughs> so I get a lot of them, Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and that's Dr. Robin Benson. You should have her on the show sometime. She's spectacular at women's and men's regenerative treatments for sexual refunction. Oh, she's in Santa Fe. She is. Yes. Yeah, she's terrific. I, know. I mean, I know of her. I'll be meeting her soon, though, actually oh. in person. Excellent. Good. Yes. Well, I'll tell give her, her a big hug for me. Yes, for sure. Sure. She's incredible. So the O shots, the first one I had, I was like, mm, I'm not sure. Did it do anything? I don't really know. The second one I was like, oh, whoa, whoa, I've got sensation coming back. I mean, I was so dried up that the first one barely made a dent. Mm -hmm. So I had the second one and I was like, oh, this is what they're talking about. One of my girlfriends who's about 10 years younger than I. She had one and she said, I am driving my husband crazy. I am so horny. I just want to have sex all the time. He's like, can you buy a vibrator? Because I need a break. And I said, <laughs> well, I wish that had been my problem, but I already do have a fair amount of sex. So maybe it was, you know, there was more of a difference for her. <laughs> and uh, it was funny because by the third one, I thought, oh, this is what it used to feel like when I was 35. 
I did not realize how much sensation loss I had suffered. Mm. And now if you think about it, I have the orgasm sensation of a 35 year old and I have the orgasmic ability of a 60 year old because you get better and better at sex your whole life if you put your attention on it. And right. there is always more to be explored in sexuality and your sexual maturation and your sexual growth is a real gift to your confidence, to your sure. mood, to your intimate connection, to yourself and to others. It, I mean, it really does support so many positive things. So I definitely have incredible sensation now. And it was funny because I was a COVID long hauler. I'm still recovering. I still am having some cognitive issues and some and, and some energy issues, but I'm getting better. It took me 17 months now that I've been trying to heal from COVID. And actually, one of the functional tests I took was the Rosetta Stone for it. So we'll talk about that. I know you wanted to get to that. Um, but I, I lost my orgasmic ability. I mean, I was just flatlined. I really couldn't feel anything when I was sick. I didn't have, of course, I didn't have any desire. I didn't have right. any libido because I, your sexual, your libido is this, the other side of the same coin of your health, your general health. If you don't feel well, you don't have desire. So if you don't, if you don't have a libido, you have to work on your health first. But if your health is good and you don't have a libido, that's when you start to look at blood flow. You start to look at self-pleasuring. You start to look at things like regenerative treatments, et cetera. Right. And also just learning how to have hot sex, not settling for the crappy sex that you don't want, but actively working on it. And, and, and when couples, when I do shows, when I do podcasts about rekindling your sex life, those are always about trying new things together, learning new skills together, uh, learning expanded orgasm, G-spot awakening, female ejaculation, male multiple orgasm, new sex positions, new locations, role plays, fantasies. This is what couples need to, to stay interested in sex. A guy's testosterone will carry him through. But a woman's lack of enough testosterone will not carry her through the boredom, the monotony of monogamy. So she needs that excitement, that variety, that novelty. Because if you mm. don't have variety and novelty and you only have safety and security, you cannot create desire. Desire is created by a balance of the new and the comfortable. Without, with only one or the other, you're, you're off the rails. That's true. Wow. Okay. So, um, what, tell me a little bit about, let, let me just go back to the testing. So you were saying, um, not to do it through the blood work. It's not as accurate. Yeah. And then do we, did you, um, talk about alternatives like Dutch testing and yeah, that's the that's what I recommend is a four point dried urine test. So if you think about your hormones, they are you know we we are women who run with the moon, right? We are we are lunar. We are we are cyclical. And our desires ebb and flow in a, in these 28-day cycles even after menopause. Just because you're not menstruating doesn't mean that your hormones aren't on a ebb and flow. Sure. So your five day horny window is around ovulation or around the full moon when you're no longer ovulating. You'll find that you tend to be more interested in sex during those times, though you can be interested in sex at all times. Now, because of that, because we, we ebb and flow, we do that on a daily basis as well. And our hormones are higher and lower at different points of the day. So our body makes a certain amount of estrogens, testosterone, progesterone, cortisol or adrenaline, depending on where you're from. Two words mean the same thing, thyroid hormone. And you don't want to take a snapshot of your hormonal levels by mm -hmm. taking a blood test, because that's just what is free and available in that moment of that blood test. What you want to do is get a 24 hour view of 
how many, how many hormones you're making and how many are available to you. Right. And a four point dried urine is the four points are morning, midday, mid afternoon and nighttime. Those are the four points over a 24 hour period. And from that, your doctor can see how much is bound and how much is free throughout the 24 hour cycle. And that gives them a sense of, okay, they're, they have enough bound, but it's not free. Or they're not even making enough bound hormones, so they couldn't possibly have enough free hormones. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. this is what, and they call that the Dutch test, dried urine, I don't know, I don't know what it stands for. I don't okay. remember. Yes. <laughs> and, and would you still use this? Um I thought you couldn't use a Dutch test when women have zero period, like they're not bleeding anymore. Yes, you can. Of course you can. Oh, okay. Because I thought I heard from one of the women that works there that um, do not send in a test if you do not have a period. I, I don't know. Is your experience different? Because I... Yeah, I, my I just, experience is different. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. That's weird. That is weird. She said that, and that's always just stuck with me. Huh. I don't know. I haven't heard that at all. So you, see, you still see the fluctuations even yeah. postmenopausally in, that, that come up on the test. Okay. Yeah. That's good to and know. There's another interesting thing about hormones and postmenopausal, which is that um, when your estrogen dips, your estrogen to testosterone ratio actually your Incre your testosterone increases in ratio to your estrogen. And if you don't want to do hormone replacement, you're going to end up having a little more testosterone than you normally did in ratio. And testosterone is actually the, the hormone of lust, of libido. It's not estrogen. Estrogen is what keeps your skin bouncy. It keeps your vaginal mucosa resilient. Right. And you can use intravaginal estrogen, plant-based estrogens and DHEA creams and things like that without even having to take oral or patches or whatever, you know, pellets or whatever you're doing for estrogen replacement. And um, the other thing that's important too, and here's someone else that you might like to have on your show is uh, Dr. Lindsay Berkson. She recently wrote a book called Estrogen Vindication. It's an ebook. It's downloadable at her site. And Estrogen Vindication explains that for all but a very, very, very few women, estrogen replacement, bioidentical estrogen, estriol and estradiol, not estrone, is the combination that is neuroprotective, heart protective, osteoprotective, and helps you live a longer and better life when you do supplement with estrogen. So for all the women who were scared off 20 years ago yeah. uh, from the poorly created estrogen reports that the media had a runaway, you know, freight train about. All of that's been disproven and estrogen has been proven to be excellent for women as we age. So I highly recommend that if you are resistant to the idea of bioidentical replacement, that you do a little bit more homework instead of just taking your word for it. Because now we have an entire generation of doctors who have gone through the medical you know, medical world, medical training without really getting much training in endocrinology and understanding that those reports were wrong. That data was wrong. They used Premarin, which is not bioidentical. Right. And they had some overage of progesterone or something too that was off. And they did it in very old women. I mean, it was just a flawed study that made a generation of women afraid of estrogen. Um, I love right. estrogen. I think it's fantastic. I am 60 years old and I feel fantastic. Yes, you're right. When the studies were done, they were using the um, estrogen from horse's urine and then the yeah. progestin, progestin. Very, very different than yeah. uh, bio, uh, bioidentical hormones. Yeah. Very yeah. different. Um, okay. So what else did we miss? And then you were just touching upon the long haulers that you had from yeah. COVID. What month? How long ago? Oh, you said it was last year, early last yeah. year that you had mm -hmm. it. And yeah. then what? 15 what, months. What showed up on your test that was very different or that was off? Yeah. Well, this is what's really interesting, and it goes to chronic fatigue and um, other 
kind of generalized issues that don't have a lot of solutions. I, I just couldn't get better. I was fatigued from COVID. COVID went into my system, and I think because it had an, a, a many years und- undiagnosed gluten intolerance. Um, I gave up gluten when I was 50, so a decade ago. And I, I was aging so rapidly back then, and I literally bounced way up from getting rid of gluten, just going off at all. I've, I haven't touched a gluten molecule in a decade. But gluten will permanently ruin your gut. I mean, you can do a lot of remediation, but all the bone broth and the glutamate in the world can't fix the broken villi. You can, you can get it back a little, but you pretty much end up with a leaky gut after having gluten intolerances. And I think that's why COVID was able to run through my system and make me so ill. That's my hunch. Because I had this chronic fatigue where I said it was like, I can't plug in my battery and get a charge. I am always on red, no matter how much I sleep, no matter what I do. If I get up, I have to rest. I'm constantly tired and I've got no cognition left because I have no energy left. You can't think if you don't have energy. It's it's all resource based, right? And I just month after month after month, I was just not really improving. I'd get a t- I mean, glacially snail's pace better. So for anyone with any kind of autoimmune diseases or chronic fatigue or these, you know, just like kind of intractable, oppressive, unremitting issues like that, um, you might want to l- look at the oat test, the organic acid test. Both Great Plains and Genova make it. And um, you can order it yourself at directlabs.com. It's $399. But, and it's a blood test. But the problem is you really need a functional medicine doctor to read it for you. And honestly, the only functional medicine doctors that I would have read my test got trained by a guy named Dr. Dan Kalish. K- you should have him on. K-A-L- yeah. K-A-I-L-A-S-H. And uh, Dan has a group of functional medicine practitioners who have been trained to read it because he partnered with the guy who designed the test, Dr. Robert Stone, I think his name is. And what the organic test does is it's the next level of molecular biology. This is the future of personalized medicine. Essentially, what what they determined was wrong with me and your results will be different because we are all physiologically wildly different from both our environmental issues as well as our genetic anomalies and NLLs, you know, our genetic SNPs, et cetera. But it turns out, and this was so brilliant, that all my essential fatty acids were great. My neurotransmitters were great. Like I looked fantastic, except my Krebs cycle was broken. Uh. And, the, you know, if you think about a Krebs cycle, if you think about a cycle, it's a wheel. And to get the wheel to turn, it needs all of the components that go right. on the wheel. And I was missing such simple things, Margaret. I was missing, I was low in arginine. I don't take arginine because I get, I have herpes. So I don't want to exacerbate them. So that the nitric oxide supplement that I make and I take is a citrulline watermelon based supplement because it's Mm. not, not contraindicated for people with herpes. So I was low on arginine. I was low on methionine. I was out of B1, 2, and 3. I just wasn't getting enough. And then I started taking those five things plus 1,600 milligrams of SAM-E a day because I am a poor methylator. I have the MTHFR genetic SNP, which many people do, especially Latin American people. They have the highest incidence of that. And uh, like 30% of people who are of Spanish and Latin descent have the MTHFR allele. So it's a big thing in the Latin community. So um, I started taking all of those things. They were simple supplements and amino acids and things. Right. Four days and I felt better. My wheel started to turn, right. started to move. I was, it got the components it needed and I started making ATP. The Krebs cycle is what turns glucose and fat into energy in your cells. 
The right. mitochondria being the battery in your cell is fueled the, the chemical process, if you will, is the Krebs cycle. So then I also started taking like nine grams of amino, full profile amino acids, because when you're trying to build back, you know, when you have a whacking from any kind of a disease, especially something like COVID, you are, you got beat, your cells got beat down and you essentially, they call it mitochondrial retraction. Your cells got so damaged by this virus injecting itself into your body that it broke a bunch of your cells and it, it killed off a bunch of your batteries. So once I started getting the simple components of the Krebs cycle wheel turning, and then I fueled the repair with a lot of aminos on an empty stomach morning and night, I really started getting healthy again after just bouncing along the bottom for right. month after month after month. I was so sick. I was too depressed to even, I was, I was too sick to even be depressed about how sick I was. Mm. And now I am finally returning to health from something as simple as getting that organic acid test and seeing that four or five things I was missing that were, that I, that my body needed to crucial. make energy. Yes. Yeah. So amazing, fascinating, incredible. I love it. $99 solved my problem. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay, so I just want to go back about the libido and all yeah. of that. So I know you teach that. Is there anything that women can do today at, while after listening to this where they can sort of do something for themselves or at home or with their husband or partner that can help to just ignite that a little bit? Well, the first thing is take flow or some nitric oxide supplement, because you'll, you'll be amazed if you start to lubricate in your vagina again, you'll actually just feel like you might even want to have sex. It makes a huge difference. And, and then number two is solo pleasuring. I really recommend getting a vibrator. And the one that I recommend, different, different clitorises like different things. You know, some like the womanizer with the sucky sucky thing, and some like the Volta from Fun Factory with a little flutterer that tickles the clit. But the problem is when you're only focused on the glands of the clit, when you're only focused on the tip of your clitoris, then you're not, you're still not doing the thing I started off talking about, which was engorgement. You're not getting blood flow to the whole vulva. Right. So what I like is a vibrator from Fun Factory that is comes in two different sizes. It's the Lady Buy and the Miss Buy. And Buy means two in German. It's a ger it's like the Porsche of, of vibrator companies. And <clears throat> what I like about that is that there's a piece that's intravaginal and a piece that's clitoral. It's it's kind of a a two part vibrator oh, yes. that goes right. in and lays on top. And um, it has a, a really nice speeds. It's beautiful silicone. And what I love about this is that it it brings blood flow to the the whole vulva, not just vibrating the clitoris. The clitoris. Yeah. So ha get your bullet vibe, get whatever you want on your clit, no problem at all. But I think the lady buy or the miss buy is the best for really getting the blood flow going. And the more that you self pleasure, the more blood you're bringing into your vulva. And if you can do that, plus get your partner to give you vulva massages. If you have a partner, ask right. them to have a date with you a couple of times a week just to give you a yoni massage. <clears throat> and I recommend that it's a non-sexual yoni massage. What I like to do is I like to recommend that we take the pressure off ourselves, the performance pressure where, oh, okay, I'm going to take yep. off my underwear and he's going to touch my vulva and then he's going to want to have sex with me. You got to work out a deal with your partner that is, oh, I'll, I am sure that we will net more intercourse from doing this, but I don't want, I won't lay down with you and take off my panties and let you touch me if I know I have to have sex with you. So if you can rub my yoni and get me going, and then I can, if I want to keep going, but there's no pressure and you're not going to be cranky with me if I don't want to. So sometimes I'm just going to get up and go do what I need to do. 
or I'm going to go to sleep. And other times I'm going to want a little something more. If, if your partner can do that, they will help you get so much more turned on and reconnected to your sensual and sexual self that you will ultimately want them for more sex. So they, it's like they have to fill up the karmic yoni bowl with rubs. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that also another issue is that women don't like to speak up or they don't know what to say or they're too shy or I don't want to like rock the boat. And I think that women just need to learn to find their voice in the bedroom. Well, I have a technique that I can give to your listeners. It's called the Sexual Soulmate Pact, P-A-C-T, like an agreement. It comes from my book, Sexual Soulmates, The Six Essentials to Connected Sex. It's one of my most popular books. And the Sexual Soulmate Pact, you can get it at sexualsoulmatepact.com. Um, that's a free download, and it's an excerpt from the book that basically you can read it, and it teaches you what it is that makes you afraid to speak up, what holds you back from doing it, what to, what you should do when you don't know what you want, but what you're getting isn't it, how to talk to your partner without hurting their ego, how you can teach them. You actually subtly, it's kind of ninja, you teach them to love your feedback and want more of it and encourage you to do it. We women do not get enough encouragement. We are fear-based. We're, mm -hmm. We have performance anxiety. We're afraid to speak up. We don't know what we want. We don't want to hurt their ego. We've got like a million obstacles. Right. And what the sexual soulmate pack does is it knocks every one of those obstacles down. And pretty soon you are on what I like to call the upward pleasure spiral where sex keeps getting better and better, better. and better and better because your best sex is absolutely ahead of you if you want it. And you're right too, Margaret, that all the sex techniques in the world mean nothing. I can teach you how to have 20 kinds of orgasms, but if you can't talk to your partner, you won't get to the first one. And so the right. sexual soulmate pact is probably the most powerful technique. And I've written over 40 sex techniques, over 40 sex techniques. It's the That's most amazing. powerful. And I give it away because I have to earn people's trust. You know, right. That's what I do. I have to earn people's trust because there's, t I, uh, I mean, there's a million sex experts out there and half of them, I'm like, oh my gosh, well, I see where you are in your evolution. And I'm not sure I'd be teaching at this time. You know, it does take a while <laughs> to get good at this stuff and to really understand people. Sure. I've helped millions of people over the last 15 years wow. in various ways. So, you know, I have half a million people read my sex tips newsletter every week. So, you know, I've got a big audience of people around the world of all cultures of all ages that I've been giving ideas to for 15 years who've been giving me feedback on what works and what doesn't and that's why I think amazing the sexual soulmate pact you hit the nail on the head when you said communication do you have anything now that's amazing that you have that you're teaching people so many things I think it's so vital people may think like ah, eh, sex what's the big deal but it's a really big deal do you have any sort of, um, I'm sure you do, any, not advice, but um, some pamphlets or something where men can learn how to seduce women? Because I think that it's just like, oh, penis is hard. We go in. We um, go however many strokes. It's, oh, 10 minutes went by. Okay, it's time for me to come. I mean, women hate that. I mean, maybe for some women it's acceptable, but the majority of us do not want that. So do you have something for men? Because it really also begins with men learning how to not only seduce us, but really look, you know, kind of worship our bodies and not just focus on the vagina and the clitoris and as if we have no arms, legs, ass, or anything else. Yeah. Uh, so I have an ebook that is for men. And it's called More Sex More Often. It's free. It's a download. And it essentially teaches them how to stop offering intercourse or, or set, people call it sex, but in a guy's mind, that's intercourse. Um, how to stop making such a big ask and to give us multiple choice of smaller options to allow us to say yes to things that would be pleasurable for us. And I teach them what all those things are. So I basically Great. get... Got, 
if I give guys advice, what I say to them is the number one thing women want is good grooming. And you look ratty tatty. So fix that. (laughs) Number two, we want you to be present. So stop being up in your head strategizing how to press our buttons and turn our dials because that's not what we want. I teach them the bullseye touch technique, which is start from the outside and work your way in. We've got erogenous zones for God's sakes. Full body touch. Rub my freaking feet, dude. (laughs) You know, I mean, like it's so simple. Stroke my hair, kiss my eyelids. Don't grab my nipples and crotch. That's for Trump. You know, it's like, forget (laughs) about it. So more sex more often is the book I'd give a man who wants to know how to move his partner toward more pleasure. That's a good one. That's amazing. That sounds wonderful. I know women right now are like, wait a minute, what's the name of that book? (laughs) More sex more often. I think that's great. And so um, do a lot of what what you teach. Do you teach um, couples live or is it mostly virtual? I run two companies. I'm the CEO of two companies. One is called Personal Life Media. That's a publishing company that publishes passionate lovemaking techniques and bedroom communication skills. And mostly the programs we sell are the seduction product called Seduce Her Tonight, as well as um, orgasm techniques. So male multiple orgasm and stamina, uh, how how men can become full-bodied orgasmic rather than just ejaculatory oriented orgasmers. Right. And then for women, we teach uh, female liquid orgasm, which is G-spot awakening and female ejaculation, which by the way is not pee. It comes from your blood plasma. It squirts out the same place as your pee, just like a man ejaculates and urinates out of his urethra. We're built the same. So don't worry about it. It's the most incredible release. I also have expand her orgasm tonight, which is a clitoral stroking technique that helps women go into incredible levels of orgasmic bliss with their partner. Um, so we have many, many different ravish him tonight, the passion patch, revive her drive. Got a That's amazing. Titles, but I give away so much for free. I have over 30 free gifts that I give away too, because right. once somebody finds a tech, I like to meet people where they are. What do you need? Here, take this. And then they're like, oh, thank you. That was what I needed. What else do you have? You know? Right. (laughs) So I'm never in a hurry to sell anything. I'm always just um, interested in finding my people who are like, I liked everything that lady said. I'm going to get on her email list and learn some more stuff, you know, because I truly do. I do. My passion is passion. I truly do love that to help people shift into their sexual awakening and expansion. You know, that's the most fun. And I do very well. I love that. And then it's, I have a supplement company, which is oh. the organic blood flow supplements and the libido vitamins. Right. And that is doing incredibly well for me. So I'm, I'm hitting the sweet spot. People are looking for this. They know there's more sure. and they know it's not on television and they know it's not on porn. And they're like, okay, what else is there? And then they somehow find me through, you know, our connections and things like that. And it's just all good. <laughs> so um, share with us how people can find you. Sure. You can find my, my main website is personallifemedia.com. You can sign up for my email newsletter there at personallifemedia.com right on the homepage. Okay. I also have a website called betterlover.com that has hundreds of videos that I've shot in crazy costumes and crazy locations, teaching lovemaking techniques that are all free. And and that all about the O shot, the P shot, penis, but all the, you know, all of the regenerative stuff. Dr. Robin and I have a bunch of videos on there, you know, so we have that. And then I just have a a personal Instagram at Susan Bratton, where I post pretty pictures of myself because I always feel like I have to walk my talk and I need to be a beautiful, sexy, you know, self-expressed confident. I am a beautiful, sexy, self-expressed, confident woman. Mm. And we need more of us. And I like to just be that, express that to the world. (laughs) And and we all should. My name, Susan Bratton. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. And one last personal question. Sure. What I'm curious, um, with all of your knowledge, what do you have in your nightstand? Do you have any really, can you, would you share, like, do you have um, some toys? Do you have, do do you do any of that stuff or you're just, or you don't? 
I have so much stuff in my nightstand. It's a <laughs> giant drawer. Um, what I have on my nightstand right now is um, a bottle of organic avocado oil because I don't recommend sexual lubricants because they have to have their FDA managed. So they have to have um, preservatives in them. And the preservatives are not something you want to introduce into your vaginal. I always yeah. say, if you wouldn't drink it, don't put it in your vagina. If you wouldn't oh, drink yeah. it or eat it, if you don't put it in your mouth, don't put it in your vagina. So I use organic avocado oil. I get it at H and B oils center, oilscenter.com organic refined avocado oil. It's fantastic for lube and body stuff. Right. Um, and then I have an Enjoy Pure wand, which is a G-spot wand that you warm up in the sink in warm water. And then it. Uh, my husband uses it so he doesn't wear out his fingers stroking my G-spot. That's really nice. And I have, I'm currently enjoying a little tiny bullet vibe from WeVibe that really has a nice little vibe. The other night, my husband gave me a, an expanded orgasm date, a, 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 a Yoni massage with clitoral stroking. And then I laid back against him and he played with my breasts and nipples and pleasured my nipples while I used my bullet vibe. And then we had intercourse. So, and I got on top of him because I really like cowgirl style right now. Um, I'm really enjoying just taking my pleasure. And I didn't right. used to know how to even have an orgasm from cowgirl style. So I've been just really digging it lately. It's been so much fun. So that's what's, that's literally what's on my best end right now. But open the drawer and there's like 20 different things because, you know, I, I like to work with Fun Factory hot octopus, mystery vibe, we vibe and womanizer. I have relationships with all those companies. I'm an influencer for them. I'm an influencer for joy Lux with the V fit. I'm an influencer with gains wave and the Phoenix pro. Those are my companies. They're the quality companies. I try to steer people away from Chinese junk. Don't buy your sex toys on Amazon. Just get the good stuff because when you open your closet and you have 20, 30, 40, 50 pairs of shoes in there. And then you open your bedside table and you've got one nasty old bullet vibe you've had for like five years. <laughs> That's an inequity. Yeah, exactly. You need more toys and less shoes mm -hmm. for more pleasure. Shoes do not give you the pleasure that toys do. That's and true. couples, I do a lot of primary research uh, because I have, a big audience and um, couples rate themselves super low in integrating toys into their lovemaking. And that's crazy. You, we using toys and doing lots of different things during sex. Like I was saying, you know, we did this and then we did this then right in the middle of it. I got a toy out, use my vibrator. I wanted to use my vibrator to enliven my clitoris before I made right. love with my husband. Sure. You know, you can, do, I have, um, oh, I have a really funny book called Seven Stimulating Sex Positions that shows how to incorporate toys into some really fun sex positions. That's at sevenpositions.com, the number seven positions.com. It's an illustrated guide. It's super cute. So new sex positions are really fun, especially when they include toys too. So th really, there's just so much opportunity to have great sex of all different kinds that I hope that I've encouraged your listeners to at least try one thing from this <laughs> litany of ideas. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. And by the way, the womanizer is a great little tool. I think that um, a lot of women, I know it doesn't it to fully engorge the full um, capacity to the capacity. Yep. Um, but if you wanted something, you know, to do before work and you just wanted a little quick something, I, I think I, I do like that one personally. They have a new womanizer. I forget the name. Doron's going to be mad at me, but um, I just used it for the first time myself and I liked it, but then my husband used it on me and I was like, whoa, this is amazing. And he's like, yeah, you just need to relax and let me do it for you. Um, it's G-spot vibrator with a womanizer clitoral sucky, sucky no thing. No way. And it's- Oh, I have to check that out. Yeah, I forget <laughs> what the name of it is. Well, you'll have to put it in the show notes. Um, oh, but yes. yeah, that one is really nice. I mean, enliven that G-spot as much as you can. Give that thing as much pleasure as you can. It is the seat 
of your creativity. Oh, yeah, big time, big time. Well, Susan, thank you so much. My <laughs> goodness. Um, Woo, girl, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> this has been the juiciest conversation I have had in a long time. In the beginning of my podcast, I used to talk a lot about sex, a lot about orgasms, all the different ways to orgasm and what to do. I, you know, Sherry Winston, um, who's a friend of mine, was on there a couple of times. So um, thank you for bringing back, being able to speak about this. Um I loved it. I loved every minute of it. It was super fun. I love talking about this so much. So thank you for all of your expertise, all of these links. I'm just going to have them all in the show notes for people to just, you know, plan a sex weekend or even a sex day, I think would be really fun and incorporate some of these techniques. Yeah. Sounds good, Margaret. I think we got them going. Yeah, me too. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for all your great questions and your beauty and amazingness and being, bringing sacredness into the conversation. Thank you so much. We love it. Thank you. Well, if that wasn't the most riveting turn on of a conversation, I don't know what is. I mean, I am about to like look up this new womanizer. No kidding. So... Susan Bratton. What else can I say? She's amazing. And the work that she is doing in this world is genius and heartfelt and can, oh my gosh, the impact she could make to couples worldwide is just phenomenal. So to learn more about her, all of those links that she spoke about, head on over to margaretromero.com forward slash episode 183. And I'll have everything down there, including that new womanizer that she was talking about that also stimulates inner vaginal area and the clitoris, which is on my wish list. Um, Okay. So I will see you all next week. Thank you so much for listening today. Love to you all. Goodbye, and I'll talk to you all soon.